It was a nightmare for Blackburn at Ewood Park as they could only muster a draw against Fleetwood Town. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. That's right folks, back once again with another match review. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Now, if you uh, happened to check out my last video when I was all dressed up in the Halloween outfit, uh, I was going to do the exact same thing, but for the review. But, considering I'm a bit angry and a bit pissed, I'm not going to do it. You know, you're going to have to deal with this face now. Uh, and, and another result for Blackburn Rovers that we should have won, and when we end up with a draw, it feels like a defeat. We should have been all over these guys. Uh, it didn't look like, to be honest with you, in the first half, and, and another one of my nightmares for the for the night. I didn't get coverage uh, of the first half due to I follow. I don't know what went wrong there. People telling me about Sky having rights to the to the to the match, which is fair dues, but consider it was postponed. Either you're going to put it on Sky or or not. In the end, we got the second half, which fortunately that's where all the goals came. Anyway, just to recap of the goals before I get stuck into the meat of it. Uh, two two final score. Blackburn Rovers over Fleetwood Town. Goals from Bradley Dack. Put us in front. Fleetwood then got themselves right back into it through O'Neill on the 64th minute. Then, the moment of the night for me, Joe Nottle coming off the bench. I've been pleading and shouting amongst all the other Rovers fans out there to get him some game time. He comes on. Yes, he's not the complete article. Uh, he is. He doesn't hot, He doesn't have the, the experience of uh, a first-team action, but he did enough to get his uh, a goal for himself on the same seventh minute. Only for Burns to equalise five minutes later. Give, them sh give themselves a share of the points. Um, one other positive for the day before I get into the complete and utter negatives of the whole show. Uh, the point is enough for Rovers to get themselves into the playoff spot, sixth spot. We're still with the game in hand, uh, but to be honest with you, it feels like a defeat. People go on about, uh, or fans anyway, some fans go on about having two games in hand. The two games in hand are worthless. You know, I'd rather have the points on the board, and today is a prime example of that. We dropped two points uh, in a game where we clearly should have won. And I know that's no disrespect to Fleetwood Town. They're a decent side. Uh, they missed out last season. Uh, I think they finished fourth. Um, so they should be there or thereabouts anyway. Um, and they got a cracking manager. I think Uwe Rosler is one of the most underrated managers uh, in the league, and probably in England, to be honest. He had a, he had a bad hand when he was at Wigan. Um, so, you know, I, I think Fleetwood are good. Any other day, I'd like to see him do well. But today, uh, they looked the more menacing. They looked the more likely. That, you know, whenever we were in front, it didn't feel that we were we were comfortable. Um, and today, you know, a lot of a lot of blame has to go on the defence. You know, Ryo was woeful. I thought Ryo was woeful today. I didn't think Downing and, and uh, Mulgrew uh, clicked that well. Uh, who else was there? Naimbi was a bit bit shaky at the back there. You know it. Today I would have rather have had Caddis in the back. Now, being based abroad has given me the opportunity through iFollow to watch Blackburn Rovers week in, week out, and I'm starting to see how frustrating it is. You know how you know it doesn't look positive. I've seen, and I, and I don't see other teams, but I, I don't I don't think Sheffield United last season were like this. I think they were very dominant, very composed, and they got the job done. Whereas Rovers, they. They hardly look like they're... I know they scored two today, but they hardly ever look like they're going to dominate a game. You know, look, if you look at the play, like teams such as Fleetwood, they have, I think, two, two players who have got seven or more goals this season. And then it's the same a situation with Oldham. I think they had a few players that had six, six or more. I think three players they had six or more. We are struggling to get goals. Badly Dak is now chipping in with a couple... We don't have a rip it up striker, you one that's dominating and tearing up the league, and, and that's something that's we thought Danny Graham was going to be. Are we not playing to Danny Graham's strengths? Uh, Dominic Samuel started off okay, but he's petered out. Antoine Sun, he gives it it all, and I put all credit to him to run his legs off. But there's no end product there. He's very clutchy and snatchy, and he, he can't. He doesn't seem to deliver end product. So. So two key areas that need improvement, and they need improvement at the earliest opportunity, and that is the defence. Uh, we've got a guy on loan, Downing, fair play, he was, he's was he been good so far, today he had a nightmare. And up front, we've got three or four guys, and they can't shoot for shit. Now, 
the start of the season, I thought Danny Graham was going to rip it apart and put 20 goals in for the season. Let's get rid of him. I don't know where you want to get rid of him. Scotland, uh, Championship, I don't know. Get him off the wage bill and bring in maybe a hungry striker from uh, League uh, 2 or maybe even the Conference or something like this. Somebody who's um, doing the business on football who can get at a decent price. So let's take a look at the stats here. Uh, so we did dominate possession, but only just. And this, as for shots, we had 12. Fleetwood had 11. And shots on target, we only had four on target. Fleetwood had seven shots on target. 11 corners, which came to nothing. And uh, eight fouls. And Smallwood is now out for the next game, which is the Barnet one, which, to be honest with you, don't really give a hoot. Let's take a look at the starting 11. This is Blackburn Rovers. David Ryar in goal. Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Conway, Whittingham, Smallwood, Dak, Graham, and Antwonson. Stand by, folks, and hold on to your hats and glasses, because here comes the scores. Uh, Ryar gave a five. You know, maybe, I think... I think the Barnet game is a chance to see the Canadian fella. Maybe we can uh, see how good he is. Nayimbi got a seven. Uh, I'm not sure how that got in there. I'm sure he, he was more like a six for Nayimbi. Downing, six. Mulgrew, six. Williams had an eight. Uh, he ran his socks off. Um, and he had a couple of opportunities to actually score for us, which is a left back, not a striker. Moving forward, Conway was good to see. And he was causing trouble. Um, and a lot of these uh, numbers were based off of the first half performance and obviously when we were in front. Uh, I'm not going to just eliminate the whole, the whole, uh, the whole performance after conceding a goal. Um, it is a bitter pill to swallow. But anyway, Whittingham got six, Small got seven, Dak got a seven, Graham six, and Twinson seven. They are not good enough. Realistically, I should give them twos and threes because that's how upset I am. Moving forward, this is how. Fleetwood lined up. Cairns in goal. East Ham, Bolger, Cargill, Coyle, Dempsey, Clendon, Bell, Grant, Hunter, and Hulia. We should be beating Fleetwood Town at home. There is no question about that. We should be beating Plymouth Argyle at home. There's no question about that. We should be beating Oldham Athletic away from home. No question. And these things have not happened. Out of those three results, we've taken two points. Out of a possible nine. Now, if you look at the table now, we are sit, we do sit sixth. Some people will be happy with that. I'm not happy with that. There's three people or three teams joint sixth, you could say. Fleetwood, Rotherham, Peterborough knocking on the door. You know, it only takes one more result and we're back down to 12th. So that's not good enough. I'm not, I don't want Mowbray out. However, I'm starting to see some flaws. Is he too much of a nice guy? Do we need someone in there to really rip it up? But that's all, it's a mute point really because who would come in and, uh, and take over the reins? Nobody. So that's uh, just a little sneak peek of what I have to say. But let's take a listen to what Tony Mowbray had to say about the result. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a devastated dressing room in there to be honest. It uh, feels like a defeat. Um, as you say, it worked really, really hard to get our noses in front against a really... I don't know what best adjective to stodgy team, you know, a lot of men behind the ball, three big centre halves heading it out. Um, difficult to penetrate, difficult to get behind them, difficult to create chances, and yet we scored two goals. We should have been winning the football match, you know, 2 0, 2 1 at the very worst. But um, so, you know, a huge frustration. Um, I've just tried to tell them there, listen, else we're very disappointed with the goals we lost. We, uh, we have to. Try and take the positives, remain positive, just keep pushing on, keep going. There's lots of games to play and we've got lots of three points to play for. And exactly, that's why, yeah. Uh, twice, there's a massive frustration and I think that's why I say it. it's so hurtful in the dressing room that um, we would have expected to win the game from being in front twice. Um, it's done now. Listen, I, we, we, I've, I've watched the goals against the both really, really poor goals we lost today, which we haven't been doing generally you know as we talked about seven clean sheets and 14 games it's been pretty good defensively and you know it's every coach it's every player when you lose a goal from a set player from a corner you know especially as it's just dropped under your crossbar and it's in the net it's um, it needs we need to do better but um, it's listen we have to accept it we, um, give them some credit for digging in and sticking at it you know they've been that sort of team this year really they've scored a lot of late goals when you look at how Fleetwood play they um when they chase a game later on, you know, we we talked about that today actually of 
how many goals after 85 minutes Fleet would have scored. You know, they scored two at the weekend, 88 and 93. So um, they keep going. We knew that. We, we, we generally we're pretty good at seeing it out today. We didn't manage to do it. Yeah, listen, I, I think Joe is, is, is. He knows where the net is. You know, you look at his goals per games for the 23s, and it, it's just a, a test for him, really. Of you know, if now he's we've been thrown in playing against men but he's in the right position the ball drops and he scores it's um, you know he's got a knack of being in the right position which is a fantastic knack for a centre forward to have so delighted for Joe um, just you know overrides all of any positives really is the frustration of, of, of the results but uh, we have to take it on the chin listen that he's not far away he's he's, um, he's got to keep working really hard he's got to um, you know, listen and, and, and watch and learn and, and when he gets opportunities he has to do what he did tonight, try and grab him. You can ask no more of a of a striker than going on the pitch and scoring a goal and um, I think he's got wonderful attributes. He's mobile, he's big and strong, he can he scores with both feet, he scores with his head. It's um, so yeah, you know, it's we, we have strikers at the club, you know, Danny played night worked extremely hard. Bradley, obviously Dominic as well, who's suspended. Marcus, so you know Joe has to just be patient and, and wait his opportunities. He, he, he did what was asked of him tonight, went on and, and made a difference. But um, and we'll see as we move forward how much game time and how much impact he has on the team. But he could do no more. He scored a goal. He worked hard. He uh, he got touch ons. He was chasing his own flicks at times there. He. Um, and he, and he put himself in a fantastic position at the back post, wasn't trying to run past the near post to throw his goal. He stood there, the ball came and he stuck it in the net. So, um, yeah, he did what was asked of him and uh, he's done himself no harm. Probably, that's why it was important to get three points tonight and that's why it feels, you know, pretty hurtful. We'll have, um, you know, we'll have dropped a few places by the time we play again. It's, um, well, every game is, is what it is. We've, we have to play all the games as they come along. Tonight was just an opportunity to put three points on the board when nobody else was playing. We put one on, um, just frustrating, that's all. But uh, we'll, we'll, as I said, lots and lots of games to play. There'll be better nights. Um, you know, we have to get back to clean sheets as, as quickly as we can. But um, you know, we look forward to Saturday and, and to see if we can score a few goals and see if we can be positive and. Um, and uh, see if we can get the next round of the cup. So that was the gaffer's point of view. What about you guys on social media? Facebook, Twitter, all those kind of things lit up after the game. Uh, but not to congratulate Rovers, but to point the finger at them and laugh. And a lot of Rovers fans are angry. So let's take a quick look. Kevin Burkett said on Facebook, Would any of you Burnley fans like to congratulate your cousins down the road on their loss of two points tonight? A fair play to Fleetwood Town. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't rubbing it in our faces at all. This was the only comment I managed to pick off their Twitter feed. At Wheelix said, "Good result, if you ask me." Onwards. That was it. When you went into the Rovers' side, horrendous. Anyway, Mason Taylor said on Facebook, this was actually before the match, uh, and he ended up with a bit of egg on his face. So Mason Taylor said, "We're going to score more goals than Fleetwood are going to bring to us." 5-0 Blackburn easy. And then Jonathan Eager says, looking the right twat now, don't you? Kind of a kind of a Mulvey said, that's awkward. Kevin Burkett uh, then also said, oh dear, someone is deluded. Meanwhile, Neil Wallace said on uh, Facebook, I see Blackburn totally battered Fleetwood, used their game in hand well, and our own uh, steaming up the league. Oh wait, no, they drew. Just one game in hand now. Still 11 points off the mighty ticks. Just saying, F off robots. Kieran Mann also said, Blackburn Rovers, ha 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 ha. But of all jokes right now, but of all jokes. Meanwhile, Thomas Evans on the One Jack Walker webpage says, sorry, has to be said, this Rovers team just don't look hungry to win. That's exactly the point. They don't, they don't look hungry. They look, they look like they expect to win. That's what it is. They think they should just turn up and they get the three points. Meanwhile, David Stewart on Twitter says, I'm sorry, but we should be beating teams like this without reply. Something needs to change. We should be walking this league. Correct. Rick Hanlon also said, should have won that. No excuses. Not good enough. Meanwhile, Louise Dickinson said on Twitter, awful. No pace, no urgency, very little creativity. Outplayed at times, in my opinion, by Fleetwood. Jimmy Dyer also on Twitter says, I warned some of you Blackburn fans that Mowbray isn't good enough and he's proven me right so far. Not good enough for Rovers. 
An email at Sam Binks says, Good to see we're taking advantage of our games in hand. Also on Twitter, Scott Walker 90 said, Not good enough, not convinced by Mowbray at all. A big chance to close the gap tonight. This team should be doing better. Meanwhile, Rob Young, with his uh, chipper response, said, Yo, we're up to six, then we've got a game in hand. All is well. Thumbs up. Mickey Squelch also says, You're very pleased. Kian Hartley says on the Rovers Facebook page, being a Rovers fan is effing wank. Meanwhile, Tom Evans, Tom Evans once again on the one Jack Walker. One of the most blatant handballs you will ever see in your life. Nailed on penalty for Rovers. Referee walks away. Shocking referee quality in this league. That's two games in a row that we've had a stonking ref. And I was watching him in the second half. It was horrendous, some of the, some of the calls he made. It felt like he was married. His wife must have been from Fleetwood or something like that. It just wouldn't go our way whatsoever. But game, it happens like that. Sometimes it goes the other way. But it just, and, and that's another thing. It's a cracking opportunity for that referee. I don't know if he's ever been to Ewood Park refereeing before. But it's just the same with the teams. They come to Ewood Park. They know that we are falling on bad times right now. And realistically, we shouldn't be in this division. In, in, in all fairness, we shouldn't be in this division. We've just got muppets of owners that have dragged us down here. But teams are coming to us and trying to t pick up the scalp. And they did that today. Fleetwood raised their game. They, they, well, did they raise their game? Did they really? No. Were we just that poor? Probably. Anyway, I'm rambling and ranting and, and, and I don't like it. Anyway, Fleetwood are a decent side, but not acceptable to be losing the lead twice. Same old stressful shit from last season. That was David Hobbs, 1990. Meanwhile, Frank Robinson says, not acceptable embarrassing. Liam Shaw says, uh, I'll leave that one up there for you. Graham needs to do one. Nyambi needs to do one. William needs to do one. Bankies needs to do one. And it's getting to a point where Mowbray needs to do one. Um, and there are loads of people out there on that campaign that say Mowbray needs to go. Realistically, who, who could come in? Who could come in and, and do, um, do a better job? And, and then, yes, we are still six spot. It's, is, it, is it the end of the world? It feels like the end of the world. But finish six at the end of the season, going into a playoffs, will we take that right now? I think the majority of us would take that right now. Obviously, it's not the way we want to go because the playoffs is a lottery. Um, but I don't want to be in the playoffs. I do want to be in a, I want to be. I want to go up automatically. And Oliver Beck ends my little social media segment here. Ten years we drew with Liverpool in the Premier League. Ten years ago, Fleetwood drew with Witten Albion in the Northern Premier. Now we are level. Do one, Benkies, and you're doing Pepe Masters. And Ian Hall just says, just go, Benkies. So it is uh, sad times. Usually now I would go into the League One overview, but we were the only game tonight, and, uh, and it ended up being a 2-2 draw. If you're a neutral fan, you probably would have enjoyed that. As a Rovers fan, you probably didn't. In fact, if you were a Fleetwood fan, you probably enjoyed that, getting a point away. It's a valuable point for you guys. Dreadful point for us. Um, past two games, miserable. Two points. So going into last weekend, would we have accepted two points from these two games? Probably not. We probably would have accepted four points. So realistically, two monstrous points dropped from the two games. If we'd won against Wigan and Drew today, perhaps we would be feeling a little bit uh in better spirits but we didn't next up is going to be barnet i'm not going to be doing a preview for that i'm going to take a little bit of a break because the games do come thick and fast and i do need to wind down a little bit and and, and start to uh, relax because believe it or not this is quite stressful uh if you haven't done so already though make sure you hit the subscribe button i'll keep you bang up to date with all things blackburn rovers i'm on twitter soundcloud facebook and itunes if you want to check me out on the go um but I'm going to end it with, with a bit of positivity. We are we are sixth spot, playoff spot, yay. Joe Nottle did score um, after being given his chance. So that's that's positive. Uh, we do have Barnet, so it's an opportunity uh, to play at home. I think it's at home, I believe. Uh, so it's an opportunity for some players like Gladwin to maybe stake a claim, Loutweiler to stake a claim. Maybe some of these other players maybe give uh, that, that young Harper fella another shot. Um, and Sam Hart and those kind of players. So, so we, be sh we should be playing them. I believe the next league game you'll see me will be the, the Warsaw preview. And that'll be uh, towards the end of next week. But until then, thanks again. Thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. 
But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.